In this video, we will investigate the electric field. We will tell you why it's useful and also how to calculate it. First of all, the electric field is a very useful quantity when we are dealing with problems in electromagnetism. For example, let's assume that there are many charges Q1, Q2 and so on here. And one single charge, uppercase Q, right here. A common problem is to find the force that all the charges on the left are applying on the charge on the right. To find the force, we can use Coulomb's law, which states that the force is given by the sum of all individual forces, which is called superposition, and the forces themselves are given by the product of the charges divided by the square distance of the charges. The constant Ke here depends on the system of units that we're using. If you're interested, you can watch our video on Coulomb's law for more information. Note that all terms involve the charge uppercase Q, so we can actually remove it from all the terms and write it to the front, like this. And now we define all that's left inside the brackets as the electric field of those charges on the left, such that we can write the force as uppercase Q times E. So the reason to define the electric field is to make calculations independent of the charge that feels the force of the other charges. Imagine that you want to find the force on three different charges, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Instead of calculating the force three times, you can just calculate the electric field once, and then simply multiply the corresponding charge to get the force. In other words, the nice thing about the electric field is that it only depends on the source charges. For the force, you need to know about the source and the target. Whereas for the electric field, you only need to know about the source. Before we tell you how to calculate the electric field, note that the electric field is a vector field. This means that at any point x, y, z in space, the electric field has three independent components, ex, ey, and ez. Thus, for every point in space, the electric field gives us a certain vector. That's why it's called a vector field. The physical intuition behind this is that at every point in space, the electric field tells us what force would act on a charge if we would put it there, both direction and strength. So how do we actually calculate the electric field? There are basically three cases. First, for a single charge, the electric field is given by Coulomb's constant times the charge times this combination of vectors. R1 is the position of the charge, and R is a placeholder position for where we could put another charge. In the second case, if you have several charges, you just sum them up like this. And third, if you have a continuously distributed charge, the situation gets a bit more complicated, because you have to integrate over the charge density, like this. However, note that even for single point charges, you could use the third equation because we can write the charge distribution of a point charge by using a delta function. In that sense, the third equation is the most general one. Let's finish this video with an example. Imagine you have a charge Q1 sitting at the position R1, which is given by the vector 1, 4, minus 2. We want to know what is the electric field that this charge creates at the position x, y, z. Well, since this is just a single point charge, we can use the first equation from before, which stated that the electric field is given by Ke times the charge times some vector divided by the third power of this vector. And this vector uppercase R has to point from R1 to R, so it's given by R minus R1, which yields x minus 1, y minus 4, z plus 2. The length of this vector looks like this, and altogether, the electric field is given by this expression. It's now very simple to find the force that a charge Q2 would feel if it were at the position R2. The answer is simply Q2 times the electric field evaluated at the position R2. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.